We don't make love. We zipper our fingers and read each other's palms. Our subway door lips open and thousands of taste buds electric slide side by side. We don't fuck. If fuck you is an insult, if I fucked up is a failure, if motherfucker is a bad word, to fuck you might mean I hate you. We don't fuck. We don't have sex. We have trust issues and body image anxieties and irrational fears and the ability to throw them out the window because we have superpowers ignited by the friction of flesh, enhanced by the tremor of toys. We have passion rushing through every nerve ending, pulsating, dripping, gripping, growing, collapsing. We don't sleep together. We wake up all our senses simultaneously. We collide our insides and moan out loud. We make orchestra of bed springs and foreign languages and then we sleep together. <laughs> She said, let's be twinsies. I said to her, sweet and low, no. We are already equals and I don't do well with substitutes. You're already an original, so don't sugarcoat. The truth is, I love your curves and your curls, your accent and your words. I love that twinkle in your eye when you get really, really excited about something and you automatically throw your fist in the air because every happy moment is worthy of celebration. I love how you think right now, in the middle of chaos, is the perfect occasion to hold my hand instead of running. I love how you run for buses like a native New Yorker who knows damn well the bus schedule is never accurate. I love the accuracy of your eyebrows just because because you conquered some shit and can still laugh out loud. Learning how to be louder is getting easier for me to do. Do you get why I never want to be twinsies? I refuse. To be your carbon copy when I'd much rather be the complement to everything you already are and everything you will become. And there can't be two of us when we're already one. <laughs> So yeah, I'm working on a second book. I have some of the other ones with me tonight. Um, and I wanted to write basically of all the women who inspire me, mothers, daughters, sisters, every single one I met. Um, so this one's called a Left Her for a Younger Woman. Just past my quinceanera, I met a woman with experienced hands. I let her run her fingers through my scalp, de-virginize my roots, turn my head in any direction her direction. She made my follicles curl, she got me moist, she blew me dry, she untangled the naughtiest parts of me. She laughed with me at my first white hair, she colored me beautiful. She removed years of weight off my shoulders, she swept up my messes, she always made time for me. I always gave my trust to her. Ten years later, I left her for a younger woman. She told me every move she was gonna make before she made it, like an informative first-time kisser. She taught me how to use product. She gave me bounce. She cut me into myself again. She asked me what happened to the one before her. I just needed change. I'm not even sure why I needed it. I just did, and now I feel like I cut her off when I go back to my master eyebrow shaper who works at the same salon as my 10-year veteran stylist. I will feel like her eyes are cutting at me for even thinking another woman could tame me in my mixed girl mane like she did. She will politely smile with gritted teeth and disappointment. I always thought we'd grow old and purple together, but I needed to change something, so I did. I tried to come back with a full bouquet of hair for her to mess with. I nervously dialed her number. A receptionist said she was off for the day, so I gave my head to Angela instead. You can't cut people off and go back. You can't cut off too much hair and put it back either. You just have to keep growing. <laughs> My first vibrator. <laughs> it was a flesh-colored, two-headed, purring stimulator for me and my partner. 
I get weird about words like partner, like we're two cowboys riding through the tumbleweeds. Howdy, partner! It buzzed. Inside of us, a humming substitute for the male grunting counterparts I was used to. I thought about all the meat substitutes they make at vegan markets and sex shops, uh, the soy sausages and silicon dicks. They don't taste like real meat. They don't do what real dicks do. They did something entirely different. No blood on the plate, no semen everywhere, just a new puzzle with new pieces. I'm still learning what fits. <laughs> So throughout the whole course of the book, I have this five-part piece that um, sort of separates the whole book, um, just based off everything I read on Facebook. My newsfeed leaves me hungry, part one. America is the assembly line I don't have the IKEA hack for. What the hell is American cheese? While Dr. Pepper is still figuring out the 23 different ingredients in hot dogs, can I get extra toppings on my toppings? How much does it cost to change my mind? Don't pay with cash, you'll stop the line. This is America, you gotta go, go, go. When did the nation start craving frozen yogurt? When did we say it's okay to pay for self-service? All this convenience is starting to inconvenience me. I need to dust off my slow cooker. I'm eating too much fast food. The appetizer is the meal they want you to eat before your meal. The side order is the meal they want you to eat with your meal. The dessert is the meal they want you to eat after your meal. Happy meals should come with healthcare options. <laughs> we trust total strangers not to poison our food or crash our planes, trains, and taxi cabs, but when it comes to trusting someone with your heart, all assembly lines stop and it's clear that only you know what's good for you. Step out of line and remind yourself often, part two. The world is having a midlife crisis. Mother Nature is having hot flashes and cold sweats. Humanity could use a hug right now. God's inbox is full. Everybody's playing the blame game and no one's winning. Too much telling other people who they should love, not enough teaching people how to love. Why is one's own gender on everybody else's agenda? I am seeing a million views on violent video games played out in real life, but no restart button. You don't need to be a billionaire. Any small change is welcome, part three. Until we stop being a nation looking for places to watch the fight, we will never be a nation that will stop senseless fighting, bullying, police brutality, child abuse, domestic violence, boxing, wrestling, what's the difference? Are we not still just beating each other up? How did he win? He had the upper hand. How did he lose? The odds were against him. The nation that pays per view to watch two people bloody each other's bodies will protest in the streets about badly bludgeoned corpses later, and there will be no profit. But I guess it's okay when you put a ring around it and charge to watch it. But I'm watching the news and the fight, and frankly, I don't see a difference. Part four. Hoax us, poke us. What's more viral than STDs? Videos of kids twerking on a cell phone screen. Whatever happened to good old intuition? We turn to Facebook for all our decisions. Your last five posts will tell the world what we care about. Who will give a damn? When's the last time your hand held another hand? When's the last time you told someone you liked that you like them like that, but you ain't like all the rest? When's the last time you did more than just like, but immersed yourself in your passions? When's the last time you laughed so uncontrollably loud you were paralyzed from the belly down? When's the last time you emoted what there is no emoticon for? We've got all this technology, but we're so disconnected. If the fiction fits, we share it. If it's all just facts, we don't want to hear it. When's the last time you really went wireless and just let go? Part five. How does a college dropout get an honorary degree. <laughs> the haters and the celebrators, the graduating and the vacationing, the dead and the dying. Every time one of the legends goes, I wonder if our generation will produce any. Wow.
got this tattoo that says uh, if you are what you read and I wrote the poem after I got the tattoo if you are what you read I am the giver a far too much and the receiver of far too little I am Ray Bradbury's science fiction blueprint kissing big brother's sister I am Ricky Ticky Tembo no star Rembo Barry Barry Uchi Pit Perry Pembo no one ever pronounces my last name right either I am curious George the man with the yellow hat is my mentor, and I still don't know where Waldo is. <laughs> I am self-helpful. I am the half-breed in Harry Potter. I believe musicians are magicians. I am poet with a heart that beats chicka-chicka-boom-boom. Boom. I say goodnight to the moon. I know where the wild things are, and I prefer them untamed. I know what to do when someone moves my cheese, and when I find out who moved it, I will let karma deal with them and keep drawing with a purple crayon in my back pockets. Hate was my first language. I read the dictionary and the thesaurus from cover to cover until love was my native tongue. I am the meal you make to impress the in-laws with the comfort food you curl up to with no artificial flavoring. I am Siddhartha, always rediscovering myself. I bungee jump into a brave new world every day. I get goosebumps when I get to choose my own adventure. I am all the dirty jokes on bathroom walls, the fortune cookie bedroom tips, the doodles on the desk, the instructions on microwavable meals. I am not the follower of instructions. Bart Simpson's guide to life was my Bible once. I'm standing on the corner where the sidewalk ends. When I was Puerto Rican, I knew why the cage bird sang and who blew up America. I'm the book I haven't read yet. I'm the book you can't put down, though many have tried. I'm everything I read. Got any recommendations? Thank you. <laughs> 